and uh, you know it's a it's an ugly day today, weather wise, cold and rainy. But uh, in Ashburn, it's going to be bright and sunny after that win. Six and seven. What do you make of that win yesterday? Defensively, they were unbelievable. They, they were. I mean, obviously, San Francisco was banged up with a lot of issues. You know, on offense, they lose Debo Samuel, et cetera. But you know, we've seen that movie here before, and people don't feel sorry for this team if that happens to them. So what they're doing is taking advantage of um, whatever the situation is, and they're doing what they should. And, uh, you know, I think Kyle Shanahan runs a really good offense. Um, they have a great blocking scheme on the run, and so they are still they still can be effective. And this is a team that swept the Rams. So right. you still... You know, it's not like they're getting killed every week. They're not the Jets by any means. This is a very well-coached team. So they did what they needed to do. And that, you know, you look at, like, Chase Young. I mean, it was it's not just him. It's like the, the interior has been playing a lot better, um, more consistent with what they want them to do, et cetera. So it adds up, and this defense is playing well. And I think, you know, what you see, too, what I like when I watch that defense is, the, the awareness and the discipline that a lot of these young guys play with. And it's, again, it's Chase Young, it's, it's Cam Curl. I mean, that kid is, I really enjoy watching him because of those qualities. And you see it every game where he makes a play because of his discipline and, and his patience in, in, watch, in, in reading the play. And, you know, you get that and you, and, and you get talent and it adds up to this. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty incredible how they've they've gelled from front to back. I mean, I even thought like the secondary made some plays. I thought the linebackers made some plays yesterday. Really, just kind of contributions from everybody. I, I know early on, John, I was kind of critical of the uh, front four defensively. I, I thought like all oh, these guys are all name in you know big draft picks, but other than Chase and Montez, like I thought Allen and Payne had they weren't really jumping out. But the last six or seven weeks. They've been really good, and I think even when you look at some of the ratings by some of these people that do that for a living, they've rated really highly too. Yeah, I don't look at those ratings because I don't trust those ratings. Yeah. I don't. But having said that, they are playing well, and I th- and I thought they were playing doing a pretty good job early too. I don't think it was like when you watch those, you know, the early games, especially even you know for a while, it wasn't it wasn't just the old uh, D line have an issue. They were getting double teamed too, and the linebackers weren't taking advantage because they weren't attacking. I think what you're seeing now is the defense, the defensive front, is a lot more comfortable with what they're being asked to do. With the, again, we've talked about two gap versus one gap, and it it is a definite change. And it sounds simple. Oh, instead of going laterally, just step forward. Well, Mm -hmm. these guys are used to doing it a certain way, and it did take some time to get to that and they had you know in some cases they kind of fought it mentally and and didn't want to go to that because what had worked for them was playing a certain way that's why they're in the nfl and getting and doing well and so i think there was a there had to be a transformation with that and you know jonathan allen i talked about this on my podcast last week but he's he's been doing you know they've been giving uh, letting him play a little bit more of that three technique over the shoulder of the guard, and I think he feels comfortable in that role, too. That has helped. Then you see the linebackers attacking some of those double teams, and that results in in better plays, too. And, you know, I saw that last week. You see it again yesterday. That That's a big difference. So I think it's as much a comfort with the front seven of with what they're being asked to do and and they're doing it but yeah i agree though i do but having said that i do think that those interior guys have done a much better job lately i mean i'm telling you like there were times early in the year or not even just i'm not just talking like several games ago where you'd see one of those linemen do play the one gap and you'd see the guy next to him playing the two gap that's not what's supposed to happen right and then the result of that though is a solid run because the guy's now out of his gap yeah even yesterday though they got a they they got off to a good start with some runs um san francisco if I remember correctly, I'm sort of on the edge, and I don't yeah, know what, that's what they like to do. Yeah. Is that simply and, just and like most are getting hurt and that sort of thing? Like what happened? How well, did you know? That it, down? That's a that's a good question because you know, going back and like I want to go back when I'm watching the second half to curious to see like why did they kind of get away from some of that? And they did attack well on the edge, and I think one of the things they do is they kind of confuse the ends as to who's going to block them. Because, like, even on, you know, Chase Young might be lined up over a guy thinking this guy's going to, you know, block me, and then the tight end is blocking down, or the fullback 
is, is getting him and, you know, or from an angle that you maybe don't expect. And then it allows like guys like Trent Williams to climb to the linebackers and destroy them at times. So right. they have a really good scheme. And I think that was hurting them on the edge a little bit. Um, they were using those five down linemen for a while. Actually throughout the game, they use that. And then, um, so, you know, but yeah, I, I don't have a good answer for why they would have, Right. Stop, but I, I also think that I'd be curious to see as much too how these guys were if they were playing it better and what they were doing to play better and if it was sometimes too those I mean those D backs have to come down and make those plays and I think that was part of what was going on too. All right, what happened with Alex here? Because early on it was obvious that it wasn't the normal Alex. Like we've kind of right. gotten used to, we know what he is. Uh, the interception was woefully underthrown. I remember there was an out pattern he threw. I think it was to McLaurin where it was underthrown yep. and. You're like, wow, now it makes sense. They couldn't push off. Was that something that happened in pregame? Was there an actual play where that happened? And that, then, that, yeah. I don't have an exact frame for when it happened. What I do know is on the first play of the game, um, when there was a blitz, and um, he gets, you could see his leg get hit, and then Brandon Sheriff kind of falls on him at the end. It falls on his leg. And I just wonder if that wasn't when it happened. Um, and I don't know for sure. We weren't able to talk to him. All I know is that it's a strained calf, x-rays were negative, and pretty much you can call him day to day. Um, so they just, it was a lot, of, you know, a lot of it was he just couldn't get his calf loose. It was tight um, thereafter, you know, or from whatever point on, it was tight. And even at halftime, they couldn't get it, couldn't get it loose. So, but yeah, it certainly affected him. I mean, the, the one to McCoy. Actually, the first play was that one to McLaurin, which was the crossing route, which he sailed big time. And then the one you're talking about, the underthrow, I mean, on that one, McLaurin kind of fell coming back out of his break, which happened to a few guys. Mm -hmm. That field was just not very good. Yeah. But that ball was off target anyway. And he was as off target as we've seen him in a long time. Right. Yeah, I mean, look, if you're San Francisco's defense and you're Robert Sala and, and you, you, you hold your opponents under – 100 yards passing and 100 yards rushing, and you don't win the game, yeah. man, that's got to be really frustrating as a defense. No no doubt. And that defense, like, I enjoy watching what they do up front because even though, like, think about the guys that they, if they don't, they didn't have Nick Bosa out there. Right. D Ford's didn't have D Ford. There. Right, Solomon Thomas. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of those guys. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys missing on that entire roster, and for them to be as competitive as they are, I mean, really – says a lot about not just Kyle Shanahan, but also Robert Sala. I mean, that they're still doing stuff up front that confuses teams and gets guys free. And, um, you know, so they're well coached. But, but yeah, I mean, now, the, the, for Washington, they also had two possessions they basically didn't get because they returned ball, you know, uh, return a, uh, a turnover for a touchdown. Right, right. But still, you were not talking about that they're not going to get 200 yards on those drives that was an impressive defensive effort and this team misses missed antonio gibson big time yeah. and and um you know but yeah that's a really good that's a really well coached defense should we be a little concerned that mclaurin's production has been down the last few weeks is that something sort of the defenses are doing or are we just kind of looking away from him like what's going on there didn't seem to have yeah you know as much as many targets i mean i guess yesterday targeted six times it was it's hard it's, it was hard to see that but it's been a few weeks now it has now yesterday i felt like something you know listen there were several times he's open and the ball just i mean the one haskins through he's wide open mm -hmm. it was just a bad pass and again alex smith first play of the game mccorn is open bad really bad another bad pass i mean those are balls that just like you hold your breath when they when they're overthrown like that and so that's not on you know that's clearly not a mcclellan that's on the quarterback's just missing a wide open guy okay. so like pittsburgh last week did a really good job i mean pittsburgh paid extra close attention to him not not on every single play but on a lot of plays you could see if there's any motion if the quarterback is looking there at all a second guy is running at him and a couple of times smith was able to adjust and throw somewhere else um but you could see the extra attention being paid to him and i know the niners did that at times yesterday i saw it but i don't think it, i don't know if it was quite as much but if i'm another team i'm like i'll try and take this guy away and let somebody else try and beat me i mean mm. he's He's the playmaker, right? So that's the guy that you got to take away. I would do that too, 
um, and just see can can they beat us with someone else, and especially with Gibson out of the game. Um, and not that Gibson doesn't hurt you in the in the in the pass game per se, but uh, you know, are there other playmakers out there? And um, so, you know, I think that's some of what's going on too. But I wouldn't be concerned about him because he was getting open yesterday, and I mean, he could have had. I don't think he'd have had a. I don't think he was in line for a huge game, even those catches. But he was definitely open for more for more receptions. So, kind of going forward, obviously, there's question marks with Alex and the calf, and of course Antonio, as you mentioned. But they're six and seven now. They were chasing the Giants for for a few weeks. Now they've surpassed them because the Giants were just dreadful yesterday offensively, allowing eight sacks. By the way, yeah. Um, Washington now has that game lead. Now they got to play Seattle, and who knows who's going to be quarterbacking there? But they do have the lead. They kind of control their own destiny. H- how are you feeling now going forward? The last three weeks. I mean, you know, you, you'd have to feel pretty good. I just, I mean, I. They are playing well and with a confidence that it's you can just kind of even if you're not like right by them you can kind of feel that just the way they're moving the way they're playing the energy they're playing with that's all really good um, you know I, I, Seattle's going to be a tough game because that regardless of what happened last week they're still a very good team the, and then then you're closing with with you know Carolina and Philly and Philly pulls off a big win yesterday so the point is it's not going to I don't think you – it's not like you just think that, oh, those are losing records and they'll beat them. I don't, you know, I don't go that far, but I certainly think they should be win those games. So it's easy – I shouldn't say easy. You can clearly see an 8-8 eight and eight if, you know, in their future, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's – But like you said, I, but like you said, Philadelphia's a different team now with – they well, are, they are. Yeah. And, see, and like, you know, the one thing, too, is it's always when you play somebody. When do you play them? It's not like when we look at the schedule in April and even before the season, the, what you think those teams are is not always how it plays out. And Philly, with Jalen Hurts, if they got, you know, depending on what, how they play off that win yesterday, are they a different team than you would have faced had Carson Wentz been in there and just struggling up and down, right? right. So, right. you know, and they think that's like San Francisco – you get them at, the, at a time, like if you had played them at a different point where they're a lot more healthy, they're just a different team. And, so, and, and same, you can say the same thing about this team as well. I mean, any team. But um, So, yeah, I mean, that's, but that's where Philly kind of opens your eyes a little bit to, you know, are they going to be a different team? Is it going to be a much harder game than you anticipated, um, you know, even, you know, two, two days ago? So, but I like the way this team is playing, and I like – I mean, you have to. It's four in a row, but it's not just that. It's it's a lot of little things that seem to add up and do well for them. And you, you know, I feel like there are a lot of guys who do little things well, you know. And I think that comes from guy, having guys like McLaurin and Chase Young, two of their you know, two of their easily two of their best players, who do all those things. When you get guys like that doing it, I think it really rubs off. And so I, that's what I like about them. And I would say too, like it'd be really hard at this point to bet against a team that has a coach who battled cancer during the season and stayed on a job and a quarterback who came back from what he did in Alex Smith. Really hard to go against a team with those stories. Yeah, it's incredible. And, and, and I find myself as critical as I was of Dwayne at times, rooting for the kid now because everyone's so hard on him. Uh, and he came in yesterday in a tough situation, and he didn't have to win the game. He just had to close it out. And, look, there were some moments there where it got shaky towards the end. I remember that shovel pass. That was a little scary. Yeah. The, the uh, overthrow that was almost picked, that was obviously scary too. But he did make an, a couple plays. How did you feel like he handled the moment? I felt like he started out better than he finished. But, you know, I don't know. I think all in all, you know, he got the save. So, I don't know. Yeah, it was it was kind of a shaky save because that pass over the middle was just dreadful. I mean, oh, that terrible. you know, it, the the and part of that is just part of that is what comes back to one of the concerns early in the year was, you know, the sometimes the, needing to put more touch on a ball and mm-hmm. um, and also like your arm just drops and um, not stepping into it, et cetera. So, you know, that but I mean, the guy hadn't played in two months. You know, and I'm not like I don't want to sit here and make excuses for a guy, but that's reality. He hasn't mm-hmm. played in two months, and he's a quarterback. Like, what the things that I'd like to know later, because you don't really get, you're not going to get this after the game necessarily, especially when you're talking on Zoom and all that. But one of the problems they had early was 
the way he go through progressions, the, the protections, the, the motions, all those things that are the little things that as a fan or as a media person, you don't know if they're doing it right because you don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And, you know, so it, if he handled all that stuff well, to me that's a big sign of growth. And then eventually that can play out on the field, right? And so I'm, more, I'm curious to hear about that eventually, like how did he handle that aspect because that would speak to him having done more and then seeing it translate to the field. I also think that when, you, when they want you to do a lot more away from the facility, which is what they wanted and what last year's staff wanted as well, it doesn't happen overnight. And I don't even think it happens in a month or two. I think that's something that has to be established over a long period of time before you really can get it and then play freely on the field. Now, having said that, you know, he was put in a tough spot. And, you know, he had a, there was a nice drive that they had to get the field goal. Mm -hmm. um, he had a couple nice passes on a drive. The run game worked really well on that drive. And I think, it, you know, he certainly got put in a tough spot at times with field position. Um, so, you know, I think, listen, I think we can all see what we see. But I think one thing that I think you have to appreciate about him is that he – he could have gone into a shell and if you do you're not a competitor and he responded by doing more of what they want him to do he responded by being a really good teammate and all that and it meant a great deal for him to be on the field at the end of a, of a win and and you know so Ron Rivera said he saw signs of growth liked his poise um, that's all good and um, you know so I, I think it would have been tough had that ball been an interception um, and they get, yeah. they end up tying the game because of it, but it didn't happen. And, yeah. you know, and so like, you know, you take it. And like I said, I mean, you can't, I don't think he's the kind of guy who's going to be away for two months and then step in and just look like, Oh my God, this is a different quarterback. Mm -hmm. You, it's going to take process. a while for yeah. that. It's going to take a while for that transformation to take place. If it ever does. Yeah. Um, and we don't know yet, but I, I don't think that I expected him to come in and like in that situation and then be lights out. That's just not who he is right now.